We are assembling the full Alpha 3 launch set that includes rocket, stand, and controller. If you missed our last video of unboxing this kit piece by piece, the link is in our bio. Before you get started, here's items to grab that you're gonna need. Scissors, a pencil, ruler or some measuring tape, fine sandpaper, glue, a hobby knife, and a small screwdriver. Okay, let's get started. Let's grab our instructions. As you'll see, there are three pages, one for the stand, one for the controller, and one for the rocket. Okay, uh, pause. The Alpha 3 is sold individually with just the rocket or as a kit that has the rocket, the stand, and the controller. And it's really confusing on Amazon what you're getting. So we have links to both so you don't mess that up. Scroll down, look in the description, make sure you know what you're getting, either just the rocket or the kit with rocket, stand, and the controller. Save yourself, use the links. Okay, back to it. Let's start easy. Let's start with the stand. As a reminder, the pieces of the stand are the central hub, the three legs, the three pieces of the launch rod, the blast plate, launch rod cap, and stand off stem. First, grab the stand's central hub and the three legs. Slide the legs into the central hub from the bottom until the top of the legs are even with the top of the hub. Once you get all three done, that's the base of the rocket stand. Next, grab the three launch rod pieces. The ends are tiny, but if you look close, you can see they'll fit together. The instructions suggest you then drop it repeatedly on a concrete floor to get the joints tight, then sand the joints and the ends to get them as smooth as possible. This will ensure your rod doesn't come apart mid-launch, and the smoother the launch rod, the less friction there will be at takeoff. Honestly, I didn't do that because my launch rod looked great. Next, grab your blast plate and stand off stem. This is easy enough. Simply slide the stem through the middle of the blast plate and rotate 90 degrees until it snaps in place. Now it's time to insert the launch rod into the base of the stand. If you look closely, you'll see there are two holes in the central hub, a small and large one. The stand that comes with this set fits into the smaller hole. Insert it all the way and tighten the wing nut so it's secure. Next, slide the blast deflector onto the launch rod. Last step is to put the cap on the top of the launch rod to make sure you don't lose it. And just like that, the stand is done. Next, we'll set up our launch controller, which might take more steps than you think, because for safety reasons, we need to make sure it's working perfectly. You'll need AA batteries and a screwdriver. Please be smarter than me. Those are AAAs, I need AA's. Take out the two screws to open the controller. Look, this is the point where I realize I need AA's and these are triple A's. What a moron. There we go, that's better. Okay, install the four double A batteries and put the controller back together. Now it's time to do a couple tests to make sure the controller is working 100% correctly. First, connect the two micro clips. With the key out, the light should stay off like this. If your light glows, even with the safety key out, it's broken, and you'll need to return it to Estes for a replacement. Next, insert the key, but don't push down. The light should remain off. Now push down hard on the key, and the light should glow, like this. For the last test, hold down hard on the safety key and push the launch button down. The light should go out when both key and launch pad buttons are pressed down. And if the controller passed all those tests, it is good to go. Let's get to the main part of this video, assembling the Alpha 3. Let's get out the engine mount tube, ruler, hobby knife, and pencil. Go ahead and open the bag with all the tiny pieces, but be super careful to not lose any of them. Line up the engine mount tube with the ruler and use the pencil to make a small mark on the engine mount tube at one inch and two and one quarter inches like this. Next, we'll make a small cut in the engine mount tube at the two and a quarter inch mark. It only needs to be an eighth of an inch wide to fit the engine hook into. It's hard to measure exactly an eighth of an inch, so I just held up the engine hook as a guide. Make the incision and slide the engine hook into the engine mount tube. Next, we'll use one of the small green rings called green adapters. First, we want to use this one, the split green adapter. Put a ring of glue around the base of the engine mount tube and install the split green adapter over the glue. The gap in the adapter should go over the engine hook. Give it a minute to let the glue dry. Next, at our penciled in one inch mark on the engine mount tube, make another circle. Take the white mylar retainer ring, install it over the glue, and again, give it a minute to dry. Now grab your orange plastic fin unit. 
slide the engine mount tube through the bottom of the plastic fin unit so it's even at the bottom and sticks out a little from the top. Apply another circle of glue to the section of engine mount tube sticking out of the top and install the green adapter ring. Hold it there and again, give it a minute to dry. Next, we'll install the launch lug. This is the piece that the launch rod will slide through to ensure your rocket launches straight. Grab your body tube and launch lug. Apply glue to one side of the launch lug and install it at the base of the body tube so the bottom of the body tube and bottom of the launch lug are even. Then let it dry. Next we'll attach the body tube to the orange plastic fin unit. Inside of the body tube at the same side as the launch lug make a circle of glue. Install the fin unit. Now it's very important that the launch lug is centered between two of the fins. Remember, the launch lug is where the launch rod will eventually slide through. So if you install the launch lug directly above a fin, it will not work. Next, we're installing the shock cord. Flip to the front of the instruction manual and you'll see the paper shock cord mount. You'll need to cut this out. Lay it down on the table, then put some glue over area two. Lay the shock cord down, then fold area two over area one. Next, put glue on area three. Fold it down again over area three and hold until glue dries. It should look like this. It's not beautiful, but this will work great. Once dry, measure one and a half inches down from the top of the body tube. Apply glue to the shock cord mount and slide it in so the top of the shock cord mount is one and a half inches down from the top of the body tube. This will leave room at the top of the body tube for the nose cone to fit. You don't want this piece to come out, so again, hold until dry. It's finally time to use the tiny, incredibly easy to lose nose cone screw. If you've made it this far and haven't lost it, you should be proud of yourself. Grab the screw and your nose cone. On the inside of the nose cone, you'll see a small hole to install the nose cone screw. Screw it all the way in. Again, this is a piece you definitely don't want coming out. Open your parachute and make sure it doesn't have any damage or detached strings. Being careful not to tangle them, take the strings, bring their middles to a point, and thread it through the hole in the nose cone screw. Gently pull the string through, then feed the parachute through the hole in the strings, being careful not to tangle or knot the strings. Pull the parachute tight. At this point, if you pull the middle of the parachute, the string should be nice and even. Now take the shock cord. Just like the parachute shroud lines, we're gonna string the shock cord through the nose cone screw. With the bounce and elastic of the shock cord, they're known for coming untied, so it's very important to double knot your shock cord. Check your nose cone's fit. It's important that it's secure, but not too tight. If your nose cone fits too loose, use some masking tape to make it tighter. If it's too tight, some light sanding on the nose cone should help. If you're going out to launch right away, now's a good time to tear off three to four squares of recovery wadding, lightly crumple them, and insert them into the body tube. I'm not launching today, so I'm not gonna do that. But obviously, I'm gonna add these stickers. We'll start with the USA stickers because obviously, they're USA stickers. Stickers will actually make your rocket launch higher. That's, that's actually not true, but come on. Everyone knows you need to use the stickers. And just like that, the Alpha 3 is ready to launch. Check out these other Alpha 3 videos and videos comparing the Alpha 3 to other entry-level rockets. And please, please, please subscribe.